Coming up on South Coast Spotlight, we're going to get our workout on at the Global Fitness Expo, travel to our neighboring city of Buellton for some good wine and chili, and take you to a funky zone in Santa Barbara where there is art for everyone to enjoy. All that and more coming up right now on South Coast Spotlight. I'm Julie Andrew Durkin from TV Santa Barbara, and welcome to South Coast Spotlight. The Global Fitness Expo highlights some of what the South Coast truly appreciates in body image and health. Hi, I'm Brianna Mellon with TV Santa Barbara. We're here at the Global Physique Expo where being fit is a lifestyle. Hi, Richard LeClaire, we welcome you to Global Physique. This is a fantastic event that's going on its third year now here in Santa Barbara. What more can you expect? Beautiful people, beautiful weather, no better place to be. We have a lot of great vendors in there, a lot of free food. Be here. I like it just making uh, connections and meeting a bunch of people and just seeing everyone and all the newest products that are out in the market. I work at Fit Buddha, so I'm very interested to see um, the different opportunities for fitness around town, the different things that are, um, the different styles that people are interested in, the different styles of workout and nutrition. My store is Complete Nutrition Santa Barbara. We specialize in everything from general health, weight management, sports nutrition. Um, we're here just to promote my store and get people to know who we are and what we do. The big difference that separates us apart is everybody that works for me is a personal trainer or fitness nutritionist. So we really like to individualize a personal goal and nutrition plan for you when you come into my store. So I'm Dylan Whitaker and this is Susie. We're promoting our Quest Bar because we're trying to get our name out there. We're one of the best protein bars on the market right now. 20 grams of protein, 10 or less ingredients. And we're just trying to really spread our name about our product because no one else out there has a product like ours right now. The Fitness Expo allows attendees to participate in challenges and win prizes for their strengths. 61, 62, 63. put together an obstacle course and so people are going to run through it. There's six different stations that we have here. They start with a speed ladder then they move into a squat and press which is a kettle movement and then we go into 10 slams, 10 squat hops, 10 push-ups and then come all the way through these hurdles and whoever finishes the fastest gets a free membership through sweat. So this is going to be our event every year that we do uh, around this time, not specific dates, but around this time we're going to have the expo and the show every year. We're just going to continue to build it out. I got sucked into the fitness lifestyle and got addicted to it. I love it. I love the healthy challenge and I, um, this is my first competition so I love it so <laughs> While the competitors have techniques to calm their nerves, the judges have distinct features that they look for on stage. That stage presence really resonates and it keeps your eye on them. And so that's what makes the show interesting. Just symmetry, symmetry, uh, overall proportion. It's that the judges sit so close, you kind of just direct your attention towards them and nerves are normal, but it's also a proud moment, you know, you've worked so hard and, and it's that moment to really shine and show all your hard work and just put it all out there. I try to keep my eyes on the judges um, because, you know, you start looking out in the crowd and you start thinking people are critiquing you and looking at you. So as long as you look at the judges, you stay tight and then uh, don't even look at the crowd, you know, for the most part. And then when you're up there for a few minutes, then you start getting more comfortable and just thinking about what you're supposed to be doing, small little critiques and poses and stuff. And I, I like this approach to the physique shows because bodybuilding in itself is it's, it's so extreme for regular people to understand. So this is much more for the, for the, for the regular public and they have, it's easy for them to relate to this kind of disease. Santa Barbara is the 10th fittest city in the country, making fitness a huge part of the community's lives. Fitness to me is more of a lifestyle than anything. It really makes it a good outlet. It's just a lifestyle that I like living and it's a good one. 
more of a passion that we have in our lives. So you take it as a day-to-day -day lifestyle to further improve yourself and also improve others along the way. Fitness, probably the most important thing, just means staying active and staying healthy. Part of life when it's a Marine, when you become a Marine, it's uh, gets you going, gets you motivated. <laughs> The interesting array of flavors at the Buellton Wine and Chili Festival highlight why the Santa Ynez Valley gets its fame from local food and spirits. At the second annual Wine and Chili Festival in Buellton, California, winemakers and chefs from the Santa Barbara and Santa Ynez areas gather to share their specialties in hopes of winning a cash prize and a competition that will continue on for years to come. We, we judged all the salsas and green chilies and red chilies and it's actually a lot of fun. So yeah, this is the, the second year I've been here. Uh, there's, I already noticed there's more booths than there were before. Uh, there's more people than there were before, some from last year. I do actually think this will continue to grow. It's a fun atmosphere. I mean, it's a beautiful day, as you can tell here. Uh, it's, it's not hot, it's not cold, it's not rainy. It's just a perfect day with a lot of people having a good time. Chefs, winemakers, and participants joined in the festival for many reasons. Whether it was to enjoy the sun and support a community event, out of competitive zeal to win a prize, or because they came last year and wanted to continue the tradition, there are a wide variety of people at the Wine and Chili Festival. Well, we came to the Wine and Chili Festival because my husband is cooking at the Chumash Casino booth. He did the green chili, and we thought it would be a really fun local event. So we came here with my parents, so it's a whole family adventure. We're just a group of friends who came up to cook some chili and have a good time today. And I'm um, excited. We came here last year and tasted the chilies and decided, yeah, we could, I think our chilies uh, could at least compete. I think, we, I think we could win. So cranked it up and realized we had to make three times as much as normal. <laughs> that was a challenge. It was fun. It was fun. For the Creekside Buffet, we're the pirates of the chili bean. We're the best chili verde of the seven seas. Well, this is our second year at the festival. We, we kicked it off last year, and fortunately, we uh, won first place in People's Choice for our Willows restaurant. But uh, it's a great community event that we, uh, we really want to support at Valley, Valley uh, Wine Industry as well as the local food. A lot of great restaurants here. We have uh, three from the Schumacher Casino Resort, the, uh, the Willows, the Creekside Buffet, and the Schumacher Cafe. The chili competition was ranked in categories for the best red chili, chili verde, and homemade salsa. Chefs from local restaurants and groups of friends were eager to dish out samples and tell about the distinct nuances of their chili standing out from the rest. We have a lavender and apple pork chili verde. We've had the restaurant just about three years. We're a husband and wife team. He specializes in the charcuterie, which is cured meats. We have kind of a southern flair. Hidden Canyon Ranch and also the ModernCowgirlCooks.com. We're all about gluten-free living and um, vegan foods and how to bring more plant-based foods into your life and how it can be easy and fun and taste good. So, and last year we won first place. We are the Klondike Cookers and we are a, a combination team from Alaska and Canada. But we live here in the valley and we're doing our special Alaska Canadian chili. Chili wasn't the only focus of this festival as attendees tasted the colorful flavors of the many types of wine grown, aged, and bottled in our very own backyard of the San Ynez Valley. Yeah, we're actually here with uh, Palmino Winery. We uh, do 100% Northern Italian varietals grown in the San Ynez Valley. Uh, we produce all of our wines in Lompoc in the wine ghetto. The unusual combination of wine and chili complement each other, making this festival original. The crowd, wine, and chili stand out as being authentic to what the valley has to offer, both the local community and visitors passing through. The San Ynez Valley in its entirety is offering something so much that uh, no other place in corner of the world has. You have not just the folks who are competing, but having fun as they do it, and then the, the people who are tasting and judging. You, know, you could do many different things. You could have a volleyball contest or a frisbee deal or what have you, and this allows somebody else to show what the valley is all about. Because we're about great foods, we're about great spirits, wine and beer. So a lot of folks don't know that. So we like being quiet, but we also like being exposed in just the right way. Oh, <laughs> 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 
second Saturdays in the Funk Zone brings people closer to art and artists than ever before. Santa Barbara offers its residents a unique experience in having lots of art, but every second Saturday you can come down to the Funk Zone Art Walk and meet the artists on a personal level. So, how has the artwork been for you today? Yes, that's right. In Santa Barbara's Funk Zone, art speaks to our community. And with Second Saturdays, the community is invited to share in a creative dialogue like never before. This is the first Second Saturday Funk Zone uh, Art Walk. It's kind of the art community coming together. Second Saturdays, I think, is a really great idea because when you have 18 different venues open, you get a huge variety of people. And now all of a sudden you've got 18 other artists who have their clientele who go, well, let's go look at Michael Irwin Studios or let's go look at the Art Foundry. The Funk Zone is a whole new world all of a sudden. We have watercolors. You know, this is the first one that we've had and already there have been more people that have come through this one gallery than I've seen in a really long time down here. Um, I really like the fact that it's during the day. Um, I think for people that want to dip their toe into the art world, meet artists personally, not necessarily have a, 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 like the museum where there's a sort of this perceived membrane and it's a little colder. It can develop into something that just be an interesting second neighborhood uh, as opposed to just State Street. We have something else to offer. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's a new one. Second Saturdays in the Funk Zone. The Funk Zone has always been a place where creativity thrives. And with increasing popularity, the goal is to keep art alive and engaging for a thirsting public. I think it's important also to bring awareness to the arts in the Funk Zone neighborhood. Trying to nurture and promote the artists here is really important. And having an outlet for the community to really enjoy that creative, you know, creative identity here I think is is valuable. We have all these kind of hidden art galleries and artist studios. New new artists, new work. Musical shows, performances. It's going to happen every second Saturday. And really trying to just create this festival atmosphere on a monthly basis. It's a good worthwhile way to spend a Saturday afternoon at least once a month. What makes it funky, what makes this zone is the people and the artwork that they create. Fuck zone. <laughs> the Arts Fund is hosting uh, an improv show and spoken word from students from UCSB next month. A great opportunity to come down and see a lot of art, a lot of art studios, and a lot of artists. So come on down and visit. Come visit Second Saturdays in the Fun Zone. But there's a lot of affordable art here, man. Like, there are people pumping out stuff that are just incredibly prolific. So I would say that, you know, Come down, walk around, and yes, there are a bunch of wineries and there are breweries, and and that's awesome too. But there's a there's a lot of art, and it's uh, everyone's really nice too. Well, that does it for this episode of South Coast Spotlight. Be sure to continue following us for more arts, education, and culture from around the South Coast. If you have any ideas for future segments, email us at info at tvsb.tv.